I'm inside of this thing. Oh, there it went. Oh. <laughs> like this week on Secure Digital Life, Russ and I are going to talk about my favorite number in the whole world, if you don't know what it is, but some people could probably guess, port forwarding and firewalling on your home router and why you need to be doing it or why maybe you shouldn't be doing it. It depends on what exactly it is you're trying to do. So hang around. And we're going to talk about that on Secure Digital Life. Also, demons. Welcome to Secure Digital Life. And you type in AAA porn or whatever it is you're typing in. I'm, so, I'm sorry, we, I was at a PG show. And I'm really okay. excited to be here. I'm glad you're here because somebody needs to know what's going on. That's right. Okay, so now, now somebody has to drink this. <laughs> it's another day, it's another episode. Yeah, he's looking at the wrong camera. You, oh, oh, you moved my, you put my camera over here. Eh, there cut. You Basically, forget you ever saw that. I, I think actually forgetting you ever saw that would really be a good idea at this point. Welcome to Secure Digital Life. It's episode in, I don't know, it's just some episode. Paul always knows the episode. I don't know what episode it is, so it doesn't matter. It, it's episode 12. 12. 12. Oh, these, these guys know. People keep me like in line, and I was going to say that it was like episode 1024 or something, just because <laughs> why not? But speaking of 1024, uh-huh. <laughs> one of my favorite numbers in the whole world is 65,535. Do you, do you know why? Um, I, ha- I think it has something to do with um, hex and um, how, no- how computers count. Yeah. 1, 2, 4, 8, 16, 32, so yeah. on and so forth. So. Well, the reason for all that is because computers use binary. Mm-hmm. And whenever you use binary, you end up with all these magic numbers from computing. Mm-hmm. And, and like the numbers you're saying, like 8, 16, mm-hmm. and all these things, they're all powers of 2. Yep. And 65,535 is the last number in a 16-bit field. So if you turn 16 bits on, uh, it's basically 2 to the 16th minus 1 uh, is the number. Mm-hmm. Then you get 65,535. And it's a big number in networking because it ends up being important there. It used to be a big number in uh, mainframes and things like that because it, it represented memory storages and all kinds of things. And in hex, uh, in hexadecimal, it's F, 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 F. And so I used to have that on my license plate. And of course, no, it's, it's my license plate said F, 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 H. And when I came to Rhode Island long ago, I, mm-hmm. I requested the, the license plate F, 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 H. And they rejected it. And they said, it was obscene. And I was like, what do you mean it's obscene? And they were like, well, you can file an appeal and go wait at the DMV for 7 to 12 hours at a time. And perhaps at the end of that, someone will slap you in the face. Probably someone. For, I'm not going to say that. I was about to, uh, I'm not going to go there. But anyway, that's one of my favorite numbers. So I ended up putting FF Hex on there because that was the best I could do. Uh, they let that go for some weird reason. But w- the reason that number is important here today is because 65,535 is the last port that you can have on a computer. So when you put a network card in your computer, the last port on that is 65,535. Mm-hmm. And there's a protocol that came about in the 1970s called TCP IP, if you haven't heard about it. It just sounds sexy, doesn't it? <laughs> but the TCP IP protocol uh, included the ability to set up something that's called a daemon. And a daemon is an old computer science term, and it's spelled D-A-E-M-O-N, and sometimes people say daemon, which I really... I used to. I like you shouldn't. It's bad. I know. And it's, I used to slap people on the subway when they <laughs> said it, but I had to quit doing that because Mayor Koch told me I was going to go to Rikers Island for the rest of my life if I kept doing that. But I was the, the demon vigilante uh, of the four train, but... But... Oh. Uh, but um, 65,535 ports are available to you as a programmer. So if you decide to write an app uh, and you're going to use the TCP protocol, so this is a one, one of many protocols that mm-hmm. you could use, uh, and it's one of the most common ones. So this is what uh, HTML, web-based traffic, all this kind of stuff uses. If you were going to use that, you would have to pick some port out of that batch of 65,535. Now, the first 1,024 ports are... Reserved. Now, the reason I'm making these bunny rabbits is because they're only reserved in your mind. You can break all the rules, and no one can stop you. So I can write my own demon, 
Mm -hmm. right now, mm -hmm. and we can put it up on port 80. Mm -hmm. What runs on port 80 TCP? That would be the web, HTTP protocol. Every web server that you go to on the earth, yeah. Mm -hmm. So when you go to CNN or you go to Triple X, uh, we yeah, yeah. we've, we've been through we've that. Been it's, through it's that. in the promo even. <laughs> but when you do that, you're going to a demon which listens on that port forever, and it just sits there and it waits and it waits and it waits. Mm -hmm. And so theoretically, they have reserved some of these ports like port 80 for certain services or, or port 110 for, for types of That's email or whatever. Now, obviously, hackers know this, too, mm -hmm. because they can look these things up. And so hackers may, if you're a hacker and you're looking for a web server, you write a script, if you're a good hacker, and you go out and you scan the Internet looking for port 80 mm -hmm. to be open. And the way you do that is you send a message to the demon. And you say, hello. Literally, this is called the three-way TCP handshake. It's a little probably too much, but but I mean that's that's essentially what goes on. Is is you send a packet that says hello, and the TCP demon responds and says, "I'm here. What mm -hmm. would you like?" And that begins a TCP connection session. And this is what you do every single time you're looking at anything on the internet, including us. So you went to a TCP port 80 demon and requested that. Now, the demon can do all kinds of tricks after that and assign you to different ports or whatever. But all these ports are available to, to use, and they often are used. So everything all the way on up uh, the ladder on your home firewall could be enabled. Mm -hmm. Now, this is a big problem as far as I'm concerned because if you do enable it, and most home firewalls are not enabled, but we'll talk a little bit about why some, some people... Have you, have you ever opened ports on your home? Your home? I have. I've used both software and hardware. Um, and Well, mostly software, but I mean, you know, I've had a hardware uh, experience before, but... Yeah, I mean, I've closed and opened ports, sure. You know, like of course. You know, when viruses are first released or malware is released, they usually typically target specific ports. And so well, the reason I usually them. see yeah. people at home opening yeah. ports is because they have gaming platforms. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. So if you have PlayStations Xbox or, or PlayStation, Xboxes sure. or whatever, they want to communicate or set up yeah. inbound traffic. So if you don't have any inbound traffic, you don't need to open any right. ports at home typically unless you're doing this. Now, mm -hmm. another big one that people open up at home is servers. Yep. So sometimes people say, I'm going to put up a server at my house yep. because I want to do something. I want to get to something from work. Mm -hmm. uh, one I saw that my neighbor used to do uh, a long time ago. This is not my neighbor now, so not, not you guys. Um, but they had a port open so they could print. And so I used to send print messages through the port all the time just to mess with the guy. And it would say something like, the CIA is watching, Ted. And <laughs> then the guy, the guy would come over and go, I don't know what this means, man. I think I've been hacked. And it's like, oh, yeah, you've been hacked. They probably hacked your brain. You didn't read that message, did you? Because the letters in that message actually have secrets inside yeah. them. And then they go through your optic nerve and your whole brain's going to, mm -hmm. you know. And then he, after a while, he would get all panicky. And then I would give him some alcohol or something and he would calm down. But the point is that if you have a home router or a home home service or whatever, you may have ports open. And if they're open, they're a threat yep. because people can come in through them, even if you don't think it's a threat, like right. it's port 80. Right. But anything can run on port 80. The other thing that runs on these kind of ports are what are called backdoor Trojans, mm -hmm. which uh, are very old, very common kinds of things. So a lot of malware has built into it software that actually opens other demons. So you install that little fun thing that you downloaded, so Star Trek game. Yep. And but at the same time, besides opening its normal port, it opens say port six six six, and so port six 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 opens. And now, if a hacker is out in the world, they can scan the entire internet mm -hmm. with a C program or whatever mm -hmm. and look for port six 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 TCP. And if they see it, they can go bink and they can they can right log in. in. Yeah. One of the most famous incidents of this. Now we're getting sidetracked talking about this, but I love these That's things. Fine. One of the most famous incidents of this was there was a big need for administrators to be able to log into Windows NT from off-site, and it didn't have that built into it. And this group wrote a piece of software that seemed very, very useful called Back Orifice. <laughs> <laughs> because Back Office was the Microsoft piece of this. So it was called Back Orifice. And all these system admins across the world installed this thing. Guess what? It had a Trojan in it. And you, people could log in and take over your Windows servers. And, and so this hacking group that actually wrote the software uh, went out, and they, and they took all these things over. So it was a big deal. So Russ is actually going to show you on the same, this thing, which I've almost broken completely now, this lovely little box. Mm -hmm. uh, he's going to show you what we're talking This is the thing we were looking at last week. He's going to show you how some of these things work on your home system. And they're, they're all pretty similar. So you, if you have a different brand or different make or different model, it may be slightly different. But, but it's basically the same thing if you know what you're looking for. So show us, Russ. So 
again, we're working with the Netgear here. We set up some uh, basic services last week. Um, this week, what we're going to do is we're going to show you um, how to use firewall and, and work on blocking both uh, specific ports and also uh, specific sites. Uh, I'm also going to show you how to work with parental controls for those of you that have some um, maybe kids at home and you want to block specific sites. You want your, um, kid, you want sites, your kids at, at home to learn how to hack your, uh, hack your parental controls. Yeah, which like is they a, do at school. A, a very useful skill, yeah. yeah like like a lot of people know how to do that. So first thing we're going to start with is something simple, a like block is site. So I'm, I'm on my computer here, uh, and you're going to see on my screen, um, I get to log in, and I'm on uh, uh, an area in under security called uh, block sites. Let me blow this up a bit so I can demonstrate it for him. Now, uh, in, in this block sites, it does exactly what you would expect it to do, which is um, you're going to be blocking specific sites. Let's Like, for instance, let's say you don't want your kids going on Facebook. Um, so what I'm going to say is uh, I'm going to click on the always um, for all, all the time it blocks, and I'm going to add, you know, Facebook.com, uh, and then I'm going to click on, say, uh, add keyword. And now notice how the block sites containing these domain names, Facebook.com, are there. Now what that's going to do is it's going to block any, any domain um, or any subdomain or page that has Facebook.com in it, not just www.facebook.com. So if, your kids, if you don't want your kids going to anything on Facebook, like Facebook games or Facebook chat or Facebook messages, this will block it all, provided that Facebook.com is in the URL. Okay. Um, now, what you can also do is you can also type in keywords that you want to block. Like, let's say you don't want your kids, for whatever reason, uh, you don't want them to go to anything with Google in it. So I'm just going to type in Google and click on Add Keyword. And now what happens is anything with Google in the URL uh, is not going to come up at all. So now we've blocked Facebook.com and Google. Okay. And uh, furthermore, you can do one more thing where... Um, Let's say you don't. You want to block them just for. Let's say you have a, a 17 year old and a nine year old, and you want the 17 year old kid to be able to get to Facebook, but you don't want the nine year old kid to get to Facebook. So, by putting the Facebook in here, nobody that's connected to this router can get to Facebook. Period. If you want to allow one person but not others to get to it, you can still put the keywords or the domain names in the block sites, but you can also allow. Uh, a trusted IP to visit those, even those block sites. And you would just have to find out what the IP address of the of the 17-year-old's computer is, um, which you can get from this box here or from his or her uh, laptop or computer, and then just throw in the uh, ending digit here. So let's just say it's 15. So what this means is that any computer uh, that, well, the computer in the house that has the IP address of 192.168.1.15 can access all sites, including the blocked ones, but everything else cannot. And then all you're going to do here is just you're going to hit save or apply right up here. And now we've successfully blocked Facebook.com and go anything with Google in it except for IP addresses, uh, the IP address on the network that ends in .15. Is that, is that cool, Doug? You, no, you like it that is. One? Yeah, okay. absolutely. And... Um, you can also set up by schedule, and I kind of like this because I know a lot of parents, um, as a teacher, I know a lot of parents who um, pro prohibit their kids from coming home at 3 o'clock in the afternoon or 3.30 or whatever it is, and they, don't want, they want the kids to focus on their homework while it's fresh in their mind, and so what they'll say is our policy is we don't allow the, the kids to be on the internet or be on, let's say, social media sites uh, between 3 and 7. So then they eat dinner around 6, 6.30 or whatever after they've done their homework, and then they can go on Facebook for an hour. So what you can do is if you don't always want to block these websites, we can, uh, we can clear a list here, and now we can say per schedule. Okay, and so what I'm going to do is per schedule, schedule I'm going to put Facebook.com. Okay, and I'm going to add that website there. Okay, and now no, we have to set the schedule. We haven't set it yet. Um, and then so I'm going to uncheck this. We, we want to block Facebook for the entire house. And I'm going to click Apply. So now everybody on this network here from this router can't get to Facebook except for the scheduled times. So I'm going to click on Schedule here, right, Schedule. And I'm going to tell the router what days and times I'm allowing uh, the people on this network to get to Facebook. So let's say I want to block, okay, I want to block on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, uh, maybe not Friday, but school nights, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. And I want to block, okay, from... 3 p.m., it's military time, so that would be, what, 1,500? Yes. Thank you. To, we want to do, let's do uh, 1,800. 
and that will give us from three to six. This is not going to be popular. This, yeah, th well, with the kids, it's not. And you want to change your time zone. This is important. Uh, we are not in Tijuana. We are in 500. Uh, let's see. Ch -ch 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 -ch. We're minus five. We wish we were in Tijuana. Yeah. All right. Indiana is as close as I can get to New York. So we're going to choose Indiana. Um, <laughs> well, I mean, I can't. There you go. So blah, blah, blah. Um, automatically adjust for daylight savings time. That's fine. Uh, and then click apply. Now, what this means is that every Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, yep, every Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, I probably should Sunday in there too because that's a school night technically. Oh, well. Yeah, but anyway, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, students, oh, students, anybody on the network here can't get into Facebook, right, between the hours of 3 p.m. and 6 p.m., okay? So that's blocked. And you can add all, any number of sites that you want to. It doesn't just have to be Facebook. But this is certainly one way of, of blocking specific domains and specific websites. Um, and make, them, make them learn to hack their way onto the internet. Yeah, it's like, if you can't break out of here, you don't get to use the internet. So but you have, to you have to box this up in a because all they have to fine. do is put a toothpick in here you don't and do that? it's done. No, I, I don't. <laughs> you put it in a metal box yeah. and just the cable's yeah, coming with the, out. Yeah, that's it. Yeah. Yep. And then that way they can't do it unless they shake it really hard. And, and I'll it, put some foam in there. <laughs> be good, yeah. So anyway, uh, it's important to remember to secure this box because any anybody can literally just they just go back here and hit the factory reset button and then all this goes away. I could tell you a way around all this right away, but I won't. Okay, don't. <laughs> Not yet. After. All right, and then so that's that's how you block uh, specific domains. Now another type of firewall that you can use on this um, is to block specific uh, services. And the services here are going to be the demons that, uh, see, yeah, I didn't say demons, I said demons. Thank demons. you. Yeah, you're welcome. Uh, you hit me too many times on the subway. I know. Uh, the, uh, we can block specific ports that may host specific demons. Um, and again, we can do it always, never, or per schedule. Okay, so we're just going to choose always, and let's say, uh, let's pick a, let's say I don't want any incoming email on SMTP. So what are we going to choose? 25? So, or out, we're going to go to outgoing email on SMTP. So yeah, 25 would block, incoming yeah. would be 110, which is whatever. Uh, so we're going to block outgoing email, all outgoing email from, sent from this router, and that's port 25. So I'm going to click on add. Okay. And we're going to choose any kind of, you know, it lists some of the, some of the, um, well, these the are all the different protocols yeah. that, that, uh, that we're talking about. So yep. these are so all, you don't have to you, what you see there is all the services yep. that you can possibly run and, and they include all kinds of proto. You can yep. block by protocol. You can block you by to, protocol. Yeah. Exactly. So what I want to do is I want to block SMTP, but what I, I want to show you that we're going to block it at the port level, not the service level. I mean, if I hit this, it'll just automatically put 25 in here. See? Yeah. But I want to, let's do it manually. So we're going to go to user defined. And we're going to choose two TCP because that's the, that's the, uh, uh, the protocol that SMTP is using. There's that number, 65535. Yep, 65, yeah. That's great. And so I'm going to put, type in starting port 25, ending port 25. And what that means is just going to block port 25. Now, I could do a range of ports this way. I could yeah. do 20 to 25, but you've got to be careful with that. Very um, so. And when Doug was talking earlier about gaming, a lot of the gaming servers require, like uh, PlayStation Network or whatever, they require ranges of ports, especially in the UDP uh, protocol. Uh, and you would you, you would have to open those up here in the right. range. But and, and the other the other side of this, just as a side note, is is that... Uh, because a lot of these home, this home equipment is pre-set up with the idea that it's it's secured rather than open. So if you buy enterprise level equipment, it's probably open by default. So it's not blocking anything. But these home systems actually are blocked by default. So you may actually be doing this the other way around, which is not blocking as much as it's enabling. Oh, yeah. And I want to be sure and caution you about the dangers of that because people do it. Mm -hmm. They say, I'm going to test something. Or I'm going to set up this gaming platform and read the instruction manual. And I open a port and I forget all about it. It, and it's yeah. still open five years later, and people can actually probe your network. They can get the services. They can get the things by coming through those ports. So, so be you know, try to keep up with what you're doing yep. here if you start playing with the stuff. Yeah, some people I know keep network notes, like in a little notebook next to it. I yeah. mean, you don't have to be that meticulous, but some I people, do. a lot of admins I know do that. They write down things that, hey, I opened port SNT, SMTP. I have a big bound whatever. book that has all this stuff written yep. in it. So you, if you can do it digitally, too, using Excel or some sort of note software. Ex but yeah. but uh, we can search it. You don't have to, like... Thumb through a book, yeah, but, but if it's written in a bound volume, you have to come and steal it from that's me true. You physically. Can't steal it on the computer, and yeah. So, good and, point. and it's like in this box that if you open it, it's got sarin gas, and there's a whole <laughs> thing. So, so don't don't oh, do boy. that. Yeah.
Uh, so then we're just going to name this. So we're just going to say um, uh, send email. I can put SMTP in there, but whatever. It's already that. So, and then finally, what I can do is I can choose specific IP addresses to block that port on, or I can just choose all IP addresses, meaning the entire network. Nobody on this router can send email. They can receive it because that's a different port, but they can't send it. Um, so I'm just going to choose all IP addresses. Well, that's all. That's that. And I'll just show you that IP address range. Same kind of thing. So I'll, I'll do it from two because the router is one, and all the way to up to fifteen. Well, and these serv these service filters that that Russ is showing you here, uh, these are ways in which you could block your kid's machine. Yep. Or your machine, because uh, I actually advised somebody once to block their own machine for certain hours a day because they had a little, you know, kind of problem, and uh, they were sending out, uh, let's just say, racy pics and things like that after hours and getting in all kinds of trouble. And I was like, why don't you maybe, like, say around seven o'clock, you just go ahead and turn that on a schedule, block outbound email, block access to all these things, and then that way, when you know you decide at the last minute, maybe I'm going to fix, uh, I'm going to tell her what I really think at work, <laughs> um, it won't happen. So it's a good idea to, to even think about that for yourself. Yeah, so uh, that's, I actually think that's a really good point. Just be careful that you don't set, lock yourself out of something. I mean, yes, yeah. you can fix it, but it's a pain in the butt. Well, if you've got physical access, though, I mean, I've, yep. I've said this for 100 years. Yep. You know, if, if, if I can touch it, I own it. Yep. And so you can always get back in if you have physical right. access. So you right. can block yourself out, but as long as you can you know, get to right. it and it's not in the box with the sarin gas, you're in probably good shape. You're good, yep. So now if I click that. What happened is now you'll notice that send email on ports 25, everything is blocked. Right. So now we have a, well now we have a firewall set up for outgoing traffic on port 25 um, f all the time, which is great. And then, um, I mean, that's really it. And then finally, what I would suggest is I like to be informed when people are trying to break into my stuff. So what I typically do is I would turn on email notifications here. Uh, but you wouldn't be able to if you block uh, SMTP on all of it like we just did. So make sure you remember that. But uh, turn on your email notifications and throw in your credentials here. And what will happen is you'll get regular updates either once a day uh, as it happens or in a, in a uh, journal or log format. Um, however often you want it. And this will help you get a better understanding of who's doing what on your network, whether it's out external access trying to get in or internal access trying to get out um, and so on and so forth. So those three things, combinations, uh, combinations of those three things, I think are very, very important uh, to, to, to uh, you know, get the optimal level of security out of your network. Okay. So on the small business side of all this, then, uh, really what, what I tell people is you need to start learning some of these features. Because if you're a small enterprise, you don't have the ability to go hire a bunch of people to do this. Right. At the home level, five years ago, I said this is no big issue because everything is blocked. I mean, inbound, you got nothing coming in. If you send outbound stuff, who cares? Today, you get more questions about both directions. So it's not just about, I want to block my kid off of the internet for three hours a day, but it starts to become questions like, my thermostats need port forwarding from the outside so that they, I can control them over the internet. And this is, the internet of things problem is a very common one with mm -hmm. port forwarding. And you'll see a lot of instructions like that with things in your home. Now, guess what? All that information is public, and that means that other people are scanning for these things too. And if you've watched Security Weekly or you've watched the other shows where we're talking about internet of things all the time, you've seen those very kind of issues come up. Mm -hmm. So this is very quick and dirty home stuff, mm -hmm. but we wanted to try to start sharing with you some ideas about securing your home environment, but also unsecuring it, because sometimes you need to. You're going to see more of that. So in the next couple of years, you're going to see a lot more focus on things that need to talk in both directions. Mm -hmm. And when they need to talk in both directions, it gets a lot scarier because now you're basically opening the borders and anyone can come in. So thanks for being here, Russ, with your amazing laptop demonstrations. Thanks, uh, thanks for me being here. We had fun. I hope you had fun. We'll see you next week on Secure Digital Life.